All right, so today I wanna to talk about Moringa. You may or may not have heard of this plant. This thing is a powerhouse, and I am pretty damn excited to grow it this year. If you're new around here, then hi, I'm Kiri. I'm a micro homesteader, and on this channel, we talk about all things micro homesteading, from growing indoors hydroponically to growing outdoors in the garden, and other ways that we can become more self-sufficient and less reliant on the grocery store. Today, we are talking about a superfood, a plant that is extremely beneficial, Moringa. I had not even heard about this plant until my friend at work, Madhu, was telling me about it. And then I'm like, okay, that sounds like something that I need to grow. So I went in search of seeds and lo and behold, my favorite Baker Creek heirloom seeds had Moringa, dwarf Moringa. That's important. This is not sponsored. I just love Baker Creek. That's where I get almost all my seeds from. And I have like 400 seeds at this point or 400 different varieties at this point. I have a lot of seeds. Moringa or Moringa olifera is actually normally a tree. It's from the tropics or the subtropics. It's grown a lot in India. In its normal state, this thing grows to be like 30 feet tall or like nine meters. Like it's massive. I'll put a picture up on the screen somewhere around there of how big this thing is. That is obviously not conducive to growing pretty much anywhere or definitely not indoors or on a small micro homestead, which is where this dwarf variety comes in. So it's going to stay pretty short. It's actually really good for growing in containers, which is important because normally this is a perennial. So it's going to come back year after year, but in the north or outside of the tropics, you're pretty much going to need to grow it as an annual. So if you put it in a container, you could bring it in in the winter because you need to keep it in frost-free conditions. Now, I do not take things indoors and outdoors after a terrible episode of the thrips, which took over my arrow garden. I will be growing one indoors which will stay indoors. So let's talk about how amazing this plant is. It basically contains 46 antioxidants, 18 amino acids, and it's considered a complete protein. That's impressive. And on top of that, when you dry it, it pretty much retains all its nutritional properties. The plant is pretty much grown and prized for those protein rich leaves, but you can also eat the seeds and the immature blooms, which I believe are called drumsticks. It's going to bloom typically in about eight months. Months. The only part of the plant that you don't want to eat are the roots because they're supposed to be poisonous. So don't go digging up your moringa tree and try gnawing on the roots because that's not a good idea. So don't do that. If you're going to try growing this, you need to pre-soak the seeds. Actually, I want to show you guys what these seeds look like. Pretty much is divided up into at least three segments with these wing type things that are going on. My hypothesis is that on the tree normally that these would then, when the seed drops, kind of fly away to create a tree a little bit further off from the parent plant. But that's just my thoughts on it. We are going to want to soak your seeds for two to three days in very warm water. And you're gonna wanna make sure you're changing that out pretty frequently. These are my guys that I started a little while ago and they have sunk to the bottom. They are very wet and they're very wet. Of course, they're wet, they're in water. So some of these guys are gonna get planted today. Some of them, I'm going to keep them, trying to germinate them. I'll show you how. And then I have this little beauty. This is my Moringa tree that I started a little while ago. I did it when I was trying out these paper pots, which I love. I will link the video to that up above. This guy is ready to be potted up. His roots are starting to come out on the bottom. So we are going to pot him up and start some other Moringa seeds. So this is my secret for starting my seeds. I found these on Amazon. They are called stasher bags, not sponsored just happened to buy them and I like using them. So basically they are a reusable silicone Ziploc bag. They're supposed to be for food storage. I use them for that as well. Just waiting for a helicopter to fly over. I really like these. I will put the link down in the description below if you guys want to check them out. More than for food, I have been using them as little mini germination chambers. I use them to germinate my mango tree. I use them to germinate my kiwis that I'm growing. And now I'm going to try and use them to germinate some of these moringas. Pretty much all I do is I take some paper towel, which I'm going to wet ever so carefully so I don't make a mess with my jug. I love this thing. It's actually for my arrow garden, but I use it for literally everything. And I'm gonna get it pretty damp. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take probably two of the Moringa seeds, put them on here, and then I'm gonna fold it over once, 
fold it over again, and then I'm gonna take this and I'm going to pop it in here, seal it up. And then I actually put them on top of my family rise garden because the top there gets a little bit warm from the light and it acts as a free heating pad. So that's what I've been doing to germinate a lot of my stuff this year. So let's get these guys in here. Once these ones have germinated that I'm putting in the paper towel, I will then move them over to soil. So for this little moringa tree that I grew, this one was soaked and then just placed directly into the soil in the paper pot. All right, so I have my moringa seeds. I'm gonna put one there and I'm gonna grab this other guy and put him here. And then we will fold this over once, keeping them in there. We will fold it over again. Don't mind all the dirt under my nails. I have been planting all morning. Then I'm gonna take my little stasher bag and I'm going to try and awkwardly do this with one hand. Drag that, okay, you know what? I need two hands, so hang one second. All right, so I got that in there and then I'm going to seal it up and then we'll go find some room on top of my rise garden and pop this over there. And you have to keep checking on it. You'll see condensation will start to form on the top. So that does help to keep some moisture going inside. We still wanna keep an eye on it because we don't want this to dry out or it's gonna defeat the whole purpose. So I just taken the paper towel out of the stasher bag and let's see, oh my. Okay, so probably should have done this a little bit sooner, but we definitely have one germinated moringa there. So what we're gonna do now is we are gonna get him, I got some of these bootstrap farmer pots. I'm loving on these so far. There's my little moringa tree. I'm going to very carefully get him off of the paper towel. This is why if you use the paper towel, you don't wanna leave them on for obviously as long as I did because then the roots start to grow into the paper towel and you don't want to tear the roots. So I'm probably just going to pull off the paper towel around here to preserve as much of the roots as possible. Tease this apart as much as I can to get it off. I'd rather not put too much of the paper towel in there, but I also do not want to hurt the roots. And just be careful. Got all those roots. Got my pot with my pre-moistened soil. So I am just going to make a little hole, get him nestled in there. And then what I'm gonna do now is get him under some grow lights, water him in a little bit. There we go. One little moringa tree who hopefully will straighten up. This was the one I started originally in the paper pots video. If you guys are really interested in learning more about moringa, I would strongly suggest you go watch the Discovery Channel documentary on moringa. It was really cool. There was a lot that I learned in there. It definitely is a pretty impressive plant. I hope that you guys found this helpful and that maybe you'll be giving moringa a try yourself. I can't wait to taste it for the first time and then I definitely want to try and dehydrate some of this to make a moringa powder because that's one of the really cool things is it does maintain a lot of its nutritional content once it's dehydrated. So that's a great way I think to preserve it. That's moringa or like a little bit about moringa because I'm far from the moringa expert but I'm pretty excited about this plant and I really really wanted to share it with you guys. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Maybe you're now thinking about giving moringa Moringa a try yourself. And if you want to know more about making paper pots and potentially cutting down on the plastics that you use in gardening, you can check out this video over here. And if you want to know more about hardening off seedlings, which is so very, very important, you can check out this video up here. So until next time, don't forget to enjoy the little things and go out there and make food grow. Bye guys.